Today we have a fresh challenger to 1,000 foot dead and it comes in the shape of one of the world's most high profile free riders. We have great pleasure in welcoming Ollie Wilkins. Hello Stephen. All right, Ollie? Yeah, good thanks. I don't quite know what I'm doing here in a church. Well, you didn't get the message? No. Ah. Ollie, really yeah. simple today. We've got a 1,000 foot hill, up and back, quickly as possible, against the clock. Nice, nice. That's Sounds it, good. on the e-bikes. Perfect. Now, I know a fantastic interview you did recently, and in that interview, I saw that you said you're using e-bikes to take your riding to the next level. That's right? Yeah, something like that, yeah, yeah. I can't remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember, I can totally remember. Elsewhere, you said that uh, for 50 year olds, you think e-bikes are a great savior because it'll enable them to deal with climbs that ultimately they can't cope with. So if you're a 50 year old, you, you're good for nothing, right? No, oh come on, Steve, come on. You said that it's a savior because if you're 50, you can't cope with the effort involved in normal mountain biking. Hey look, you're not gonna keep up with me, are you? Well, I'm just going to give you today a bit of an insight into the future, what the future holds for you, okay? We're going to oh, level yeah. things up here. So, a little present for you, fresh from Iraq, from the front line, a bulletproof vest. So I think that should level oh, things up. That is heavy. That's level, is it? It's getting... <laughs> Look, it's all about power to weight. So in previous 1,000 foot deads, we had Sylvain Guntoli, who was the world superbike champion. He beat me by three minutes. Uh, in the last one, Georgia Leslie had me by a minute on each of the climbs. Today, I've got fresh climb, fresh descents. I reckon I'm in with a chance. Oh. First up, let's weigh in time. So Ollie, being a professional mountain biker, professional athlete, you will know that it's all about the power to weight on a mountain bike. Quite. So I've got a lot of, uh, I reckon I'm not, you know, I'm not fighting weight, but I think, you know, you've got a lot of catch up. Uh, it's obviously, it's the system weight we're talking about. But first of all, we're gonna do a weigh in between myself and Ollie. So here we go. Get on the scales. Let me check you're not cheating, you know, it's like Weight Watchers. <laughs> oh. 97, 97 kilos dead. Oliver? Whoa, 77. So it's time to even things out, touch it. Let me help you with this. So that's 20. Let's help you with that on. Get your helmet Jesus. back on. You walk around like this. <laughs> Holly, oh this, this, this is an insight into the future for you. <laughs> this is what happens when you get to 50. Whoa. Get on the scales. Wait for it to go to zero. Okay, get on the scales. And we are up. We're up to 90 kilos. So, so this isn't even it? Not even it. So we need to get you piled up with a bit more. So in here, just happen to have a five kilo packed for you. So it should, with the weight of the bag. Right now. Nothing. So that should be the weight of the bag. Get that on you. Get you to 97 oh, kilos. Man. This is, how long have you been like this? <laughs> How long before you're gonna get like this? Oh my God, wow. 96. So I still got one kilo. So you got one kilo, however. I'll go to the toilet. However, remember that your Focus bike has got a smaller battery than my Specialized Canevo. So I reckon I'm gonna give you that kilo just there. So Ollie, what, what does it feel like being in my world? Honestly, standing here, it feels mental. It feels, <laughs> you know when you've been stood in a queue for ages and you feel like super aware of yeah. How much weight's going through your feet? It's like that. It's... <laughs> Probably be faster on the downhill, right? You tell me. Jesus, man, I'm sick of this already. This is absolutely ridiculous. I'm not joking either. I'm like, I'm not doing um, EMB and acting here. I can't even get the bag on. That is proper gnarly. Well, I need to set up my suspension for starters. I'm bombed. <laughs> I'm bombed out. <laughs> Well, I, th I think I'm gonna have to re, uh, realign my suspension, check out my sag. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my Lord, that is... I don't look at Steve and think, 
he's this fat. <laughs> <laughs> what, what on earth are we doing? Well, uh, Oliver, uh, we just come out of the church and uh, as you mentioned, e-bikes could be the savior for 50 year old people. How does it feel now you've got the bulletproof vest on? Well, my argument would be, it feels really bad. My, my argument would be that this weight yeah. is in one spot and it's not functional weight. Whereas your functional weight, right. your, your weight that you have extra on me is functional. Well, so it's helping you turn well, this those This is tracks. all chit chat at the moment. We're only gonna find out when we get our times in, right? You're quite right. What I'm interested in is, is that bike gonna be putting out as much power with the, with the backpack and the bulletproof vest as normal, right? So it shouldn't, should it change? Well, I don't know. I don't quite know how these robots work, if I'm honest. What I think, what I think is interesting is whether I'll just burn through all the bars on my battery and actually not be at a disadvantage on the climb, you know? Wow. We don't know that. We don't know. However, seeing as George just smoked me by two minutes last time, I reckon you're at a distance. Well, I reckon the field is now level. Me and you, yeah. me and you are riding on equal well, terms. Well, you would reckon that. What that really translates to is you reckon you're going to smoke me. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's why you invited me down here, isn't it? Yeah, totally. To publicly humiliate. Publicly me. humiliate someone who humiliated me in public on your interview. <laughs> <laughs> So it begins again, we're at the bottom of stage one for 1,000 foot dead. All starts here, Ollie. The flies are out to kind of witness this historic climb. Got your vest on, feeling good? No, things have gone downhill. I've gained a lot of weight and there's a lot of flies buzzing around me. It must be what you feel like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> However, Ollie's been to the loo, he's lost a little bit of weight. True. Yeah, what do you reckon, a couple of pounds? It was at least a couple of pounds. Okay. Right, let's get the clock running and we've got, a, I think, a roughly 10 minute climb to the, to the start of the first downhill stage. Let's go. Okay, turbo. Phone's on. Screen lock. Pocket. Go. See how smooth that was? That is the thing in the world going past 25 is like so rubbish <laughs> oh my god <laughs> why why the hell did we put ourselves through this <laughs> can we swap times i want to know i want to know oh my god why did we put ourselves through this EMBN, that's why I put everything into that, absolutely. It's, it felt like I was going backwards on some of that. When it gets steeper, it's honestly, it felt like I was, felt like my egg, legs were packing in. So I've got almost opposite experience to you. Really? Well, I could sit at 25, good. And then as soon as it got to the flat, yeah. I can't get above it at all. What the I can hell? get out of the seat, I can do anything. I've just got yeah, nothing yeah. there. I've got zero, zero there. Well, here we are, Ollie, the start of the first descent. Now, you've spoken before at the fact that e-bikes descend upsettingly well. Yeah, upsettingly well, definitely. Really? I'm not sure about with these on. Well, I tell you what, I'm not going to upset you. I'm going to take, take that bulletproof vest on for oh. this challenge. But I want to talk more about this upsettingly well philosophy. Yeah. Why do you think they're upsettingly fast? Well, I think it's because there's weight low down. Right. That's all I can um, put it to. I um, gate weight, gate weight off then. I think we're. I think I'm probably faster through certain trails on my e-bike with it turned off, motor turned off, than I am on my normal bike. Right, but you still want to take that vest off, right? Yeah, this is pointless weight. Come on, Steve. This is <laughs> an unfunctional weight. So the point is with Ollie Wilkins, you see him in the videos, he's always up in the air, skipping through the terrain. You tell me that on an e-bike, it's more of a wheels on the ground approach? Yeah, definitely, yeah. I set up my suspension more for traction right. and rolling speed. Yeah. Whereas normally I set up my suspension for hopping, moving around the trail, so. So on your e-bike, it's about straight line simplicity, yeah? I would say so, yeah. Right, okay. I would say well, so. More suited to the stopwatch. And this track, interestingly, is there's quite high speeds on this. You're going to be getting over the 25k restriction very easily. Yeah. So I reckon the average speed in this is really high. So it's straight line, whereas compared to the next tracks, so you need to get all your speed on this one, right? All the best, okay. Ollie. You too, sir. 
Good luck. Good luck. Good, 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 good. Look at him go. Oh, and it's Dave. Oh, go, 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 go. Oh, God, wow. Oh, so there you go. End of stage two. Bit of wild left to deal with. Uh, there was a bird flapping on the track. What was that all about? Oh, God, pretty, pretty slick actually in the, in the wet. There's a couple of uh, ruts really going really fast. If you don't get in the rut, you're going to be offline a little bit, sliding around. Proper foot off ruts, aren't they? Yeah. Whew. So the war continues. We're at the bottom of stage three. We've done one climb, one descent. The first climb was pretty gradual and smooth. This is quite different. It's punchy in places, bit of single track, a lot of rocks. I think there's been a lot of body movements going on in this. Oh, you're, not, you're not sat there plodding up the hill. It's about working your way up the hill. So uh, who knows, Wilkins could, you could go ahead, you could go behind. Have a good one. Boop, boop, boop. Go on it. Oh my goodness gracious me. Ugh. I think this is a bit of a tortoise and hare race, this one. However, I'm gonna go into turbo. Ready on three, two, one? Let's go! I feel like I can throw it. Oh my god. Oh man. Oh, I can't stop. Like Ollie said, that was that was like the first run was about legs, the second run was like all body. He's actually hurting. Oh, he's actually hurting. I can't, I can't stop to even talk. I thought you were gonna overtake me, dude. Oh man, e-bikes are well easy. It's cheating. Oh my God. It's interesting, isn't it? I thought I was gonna be sick then when I got to the top. Now there's a man with a weight on his shoulders about to get a weight off his shoulders. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Not even. <laughs> oh my goodness. Have we, have we found a new downhill bike workout? There's no way I can make myself feel that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? This was meant to be like a fun experiment. There's no way I can make myself feel this way. At the start, I thought, Okay, at, He's like, at the start, yeah. Dude, at the start, I thought Steve's misguided here. 
I was thinking the motor is going to take up for the, the difference. Yeah. It's going to level everything off like yeah. everyone says e-bikes yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Man. Well, Ollie, uh, stage three done. We've got a downhill section to do, do, and then it's a nice cup of tea. Please, need more than a cup of tea. Yeah. Good effort. Fair dues. Fair dues. <laughs> We're at the top of the final stage. I've devised the final stage, which is a non-typical downhill stage. It's got a load of nibbly rocks in it. It's kind of a bit trialsy. Actually, it's really trialsy. Okay. Go, on, Boop. go, go, Boop. go! Boop. Boop. Spring Boop. into action. Okay, here we go. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. How was it? That was a long day. Did you make any mistakes? That was a long day. Well, did I make mistakes? Well, like yeah. a thousand mistakes <laughs> in amongst all those rocks. Pretty technical. That wasn't exactly Surrey Hills, right? No, far from it, far from it. Hit your pedals a lot, don't you? A little bit, yeah. yeah. So there you go, the end of run four. Time to get the times in. <laughs> Holly, cheers. Big day out. Cheers, Steve. Cheers. I think that was quite representative of a good e-bike ride. Yeah, quite a gnarly battery. Battery's worth that was, wasn't it? Full on, full on. Hey, let's talk through the stages. Stage one, um, hill climb. Reasonably kind of gradual fire road. Yeah. Uh, I thought that that was where I would get my advantage because, um, I don't know, I just, I just felt it in my bones. So I... Whilst I was doing it, I was thinking, he's not going to get an advantage on me because he's not going to go above 25k. And I was thinking all, all along, I'm going to catch this guy up on the climb. Very interesting. Why is that? I didn't. I stayed on 25k. And it's hard, you know, it's hard to do that. It requires a lot of a big physical effort to keep an e-bike going at 25k yeah. now. I mean, every flat section. Yeah. I. <clears throat> Without the weights on, I would have gone above 25k, I reckon. You think so? I don't know, but I think so. I felt like you probably would have. Yeah. Um, do you know what's interesting for me is that I felt I felt physically drained on that first climb. Yeah. And it felt like, this, this is the interesting thing, right? Is that it felt like at the start, I was fresh and it felt that the motor gave me loads of power. Yet yeah. as I got six, uh, up the climb, it felt like the less I was giving into the motor, the less it was giving back to me. Oh, right, that's interesting, yeah. And what about on your, I mean, we, talk, we have different motors. We have a bros motor and a Shimano motor, but. Honestly, for me, I was just focusing on staying at 25. Right, okay. And I could, I could actually hold that for nearly all of the climb. But the times are in. Times are in. Times time. are in, okay, uh, first climb. Uh, I did a 7.32, Ollie Wilkins, 8 minutes 14. <laughs> no way! So I actually thought that the, I thought that the, the bulletproof vest would level things out, but actually... five seconds? It's actually put you back 45 seconds. I reckon, I think, judging from experience with Sylvain Gentoli and Georgia Leslie, who've done the previous Thousand for Deads, that it would level things out, but you've actually almost lost two minutes. So then we dived into stage two. I think it was a good idea to take the vest off at that point. Yeah, I think so as well. <laughs> because ca so carrying well. all those kilos all day would have been a big day out. Yeah. So the stage was high speed. I think we were above the 25K most of the stage. It was flat out. Yeah. Um, and the times are in on this stage and I did a 2.39. Ollie Wilkins, 2.34. Not bad, but not 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some work to do, haven't I? <laughs> I know. And then, so then, 
way to back on for stage three, which was a more of a technical climb up through some rocks and slower speed. I think my average speed was 10 Ks an hour. Yeah. And this was where I really thought I would struggle up to the slow stuff. Right. And- uh, Do you know, this was the biggest effort for me. <laughs> I've never been as tired as after that stage. Like I couldn't, that was a lung burner, beyond any lung burner. It was, it was mental, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so times are in. Stage three, the hill climb. Um, Holly Wilkins, six minutes and one second. Bear in mind, he, you know, the weight was meant to be the big leveler, right? That's it. We've got to talk about this. The We've weight, got to talk about it. The weight is me becoming the same weight as you. Let me give you the time first of all before we talk about it. So you were six minutes one. Yeah. 4.27. A minute and a half. That's... <laughs> That's absolutely ridiculous. It is ridiculous, isn't the it? The effort as well that I've put in. I feel a bit, yeah. a bit ashamed here. But Ollie, two things, two things here is, uh, you know, is it a great leveler? Uh, you know, is Ebergs a great leveler? You, we should have been equal up that climb, but actually you were uh, way behind. I'm, I guess my how do, only How argument, do other people feel? Well, my only argument can be that the mass that I've got on isn't yeah. functional. Yours is all functional. Right, well, you, you know, said, you muscle said. <laughs> is powering your cranks, isn't it? Mine Maybe. is just dead weight. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's all I can think. I never thought it, the times would be that different. I never thought they would. So, for you, like, actually, let's go on to the last stage before we, before we wrap things yeah. up. So stage four, su super technical. What are you laughing at? Well, I'm not going to get the time back now, am I? <laughs> <laughs> stage four, super technical rocks, uh, classic stage. Um, well, fair dues, Ollie, you did well on this one. Um, I came in on 3.43. Ollie Wilkins smoked me again, 3.41. Not by much, Good, good work, good work, good work. Not by much. So, um, let's rewind it back to the church where we began it all earlier. And like I reminded you that you thought that e-bikes were the great savior for 50 year olds who didn't have the power to kind of ride conventional bikes. I spun it in a positive way. <laughs> You're being negative. Okay, however you did, you did. So, did say, yeah. so how do you feel now? now I mean, this, this, what we did today asks so many questions. Yeah, it does really, it does. It's sort of opening up a bit of a can of worms, isn't it? Because I don't, so what all I can, can think that it shows, I, I am now equivalent to a person with low fitness for my body mass. You think so? That's what I think. I mean, you I, are. I think my times represent. I'm, I'm right. not out of shape, and that was these times are. Yeah. I think we need to go in, reconsider this, and have a rematch in the Surrey Hills. I'm up for that. I think different hills, different challenges. Are e-bikes the great leveler? I think that's what that's what we've come to the. Are they? I'm gonna have to sleep in it, Ollie. I really have to sleep in it. Big time. Yeah. So there you go. I hope this uh, feature today has answered some of your questions when it comes to power to weight ratios when it comes to e-bikes. Uh, if you want to see uh, more e-bike related videos, there's a good one on e-bikes versus downhill, just down here. And another on e-bikes versus Enduro, which the Don did in Finale a few months ago. Uh, Ollie, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's Always been a pleasure. It's been physical, I can tell you that. Um, yeah, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Definitely give us some of your thoughts uh, below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so.